In this video, I'm going to talk about determining whether a relation is a function. Uh, so basically what we're going to do here is we're going to look at a couple of actually real life examples of when something is a relation, hopefully getting a better understanding of, of what a function is, excuse me, trying to determine whether a relation is a function. Because uh, there's many, many things that have relationships. There's two different items that will have relationships, but does that relation um, actually is that relation actually a function that's what we're trying to determine here get a better understanding of what a function actually is okay so uh, a little bit of vocabulary here before we get started a function I, I, I like to think of it this way a function for every input you have a unique output so for every time you plug something in you're only going to get one result that's kind of how I see a function okay there's lots of different ways to look at it um, uh, but that's kind of my way of my simple way of, of understanding what a function is for every for every input that you have you're gonna have a unique output uh, so whenever you plug something in you're only gonna get one answer you're gonna get one solution or you're only gonna get one thing uh, so we're gonna use a couple of real-life examples uh, to try to get a better understanding of what a function is okay so determine whether each relation is a function. So here we go. Uh, these are two separate relations. You've got one on the left here, one on the right. I'll start with the one here on the left. Uh, from the items in a store to their prices on a certain date. Okay, so the, the items in a store to their prices on a certain date. Okay, so we have items in a store. Let's actually just start with that. Items in a store. So I go to the grocery store with mom and dad because I'm a good son or daughter. And I go grocery shopping. I'm picking up a couple of things. We get Doritos. We get uh, we get cereal. We get a couple of things. So uh, a couple of things that you can get at the store. We can get chips, Doritos, whatever it is that you like. We can get chips. We can get cereal. Uh, we can get milk. And we can get, um, I don't know, lunch meat. Uh, yeah. Lunch meat for sandwiches, something like that. Okay, just a couple of things you can see in the store. Now the thing is, is writing these down. These are kind of the first. These are the my. This is the first piece of my relation. Again, a relation is a comparison of two different things. So here's my first set of things. Uh, these are all just things in the store. Okay, so two. Now this two word, that's kind of what I want to pay attention to. This kind of gives you the division between your two things. The items in the store to their prices on a certain date. So that's kind of the division between the two, how you can tell uh, what, my two, uh, what my two pieces are, what my two pieces in the relation are. Okay, so items in the store, here's uh, four items that we have, and then their prices on a certain date. Now, we actually have to say certain date because some items will go on sale one day, so there'll be different prices other days, something to that effect. A uh, bag of chips may be uh, two for six dollars one day, and then the next day they're four fifty, dollars back up to, to the regular price, whatever the case may be. So, we, so we're putting here on a certain date. Uh, so we're just we're just looking at one day. We're not looking over the course of a week or something to that effect to really confuse us. Okay, so we're looking at the prices for on a certain day. So chips, chips on this certain day are usually going to be something to the effect of about four dollars and fifty cents, something like that. Okay, sometimes your Doritos, sometimes your Lay's chips, whatever they are, they're about, they're about that. Okay, cereal. Um, cereal on the other hand is going to be just a little bit cheaper. Maybe I'm buying. Um, uh, no, maybe an off-brand or something like that. We're going to go with, with two dollars and eighty-nine cents for a box. Okay. Now for milk on this certain day, maybe milk is on sale, and then milk is also going to be two dollars and eighty-nine cents. Okay. Stocking up on milk for the week, might buy a couple of gallons, something to that effect. Okay. Now notice here that I've got two arrows going to the same price. This is this is going to be this is going to be okay. We'll, we'll talk about this here in a minute. Okay. Lunch meat on the other hand, this is going to be. Um, uh, let's 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 get a round round number about five dollars. So five dollars for a pound of of sliced lunch meat for for lunches for school or whatever the case is. Okay. So now as I look at all these numbers, this is just this is just a random example I come up with. Nothing nothing too extraordinary. Um, but I have chips, cereal, milk, and lunch meat. These are all my inputs. This is all the the first part of my relation from the items in the store. These are my inputs. So these are things that I put into my cart. And then these are the prices, these are the outputs, okay, these are the prices on that certain date. Okay, now the thing is, we want to figure out, is this a function or not? Okay, so again, a function is, um, for every input, there is a unique output. So whenever you plug something in, you're only going to get one answer. 
Okay, you're only going to get one answer. So, okay, so if I plug in chips, if I put chips into my cart, they're only going to be four dollars and fifty cents. Now we're speaking, we're speaking a specific type of chips. We'll go with Doritos. So when I put Doritos in my cart, they're only going to be four dollars and fifty cents. Okay, so if that's what they say on the shelf when I when it goes up to the counter, that's what they're going to ring up at. It's not going to change. That's what we call a unique output. So a a, a single input of my Doritos gets a single output of four dollars and fifty cents up at the register. Okay, same thing here. Cereal is two dollars and eighty-nine cents for this box of cereal. Okay, so again, when I when I get cereal, it's not going to be a different price. It's going to be the same price I see on the shelf, two dollars and eighty-nine cents. Now this is where it gets might get a little confusing, but again, you just stick with stick with the same logic. Milk is then when I when I when I look at milk on the shelf, it's two dollars and eighty-nine cents. So milk. When I go up to the register, it's still going to be two dollars and eighty-nine cents. That's a un that's that's a unique price for milk. Now, yes, cereal and milk do say, share the same price, but what we're looking at is a function for every input. It has a unique output. A function, whatever you plug in, I'm only going to get one result. So when I put milk into my cart, it's only going to be two dollars and eighty-nine cents. That's okay. Yes, you can have multiple items that go to the same price, but it's still going to be okay for a function. Okay. And then lunch meat, on the other hand, same thing with chips up here. Uh, lunch meat has a un has a unique answer of five dollars. Okay, five dollars for for a pound of lunch meat. Okay, so this case, this one is actually a function. This is an example of a function. Okay, so this is an example of a function. And again, this right here it might be a little bit confusing since they're going to the same number, but again, you've got to remember, functions for every uh, input, there's a unique output. So for whenever I plug something in, I only get one answer. Okay, when I plug cereal in, I get one answer. When I plug milk in, I get one answer. That's, that's okay for a function, even though you get to the same answer of $2.89. Okay. Okay, so that's one example. That's one example for for a function. We're going to look at this other example. Let me change colors a little bit. So from the types of fruits to their colors. Okay, so from the types of fruit, and again, this is a relation relating two things. So the types of fruits to again that two word there. It's going to divide um, divide us between our two different uh, things rela relating. So fruits to their color. So a couple of fruit that I could have. I could have apples. I could have pears. I could have strawberries, straw, oh, there's supposed to be an R in there, strawberries. That's enough, I think. About three different examples of different types of fruit. Okay, now, now here's the thing, though, is that apples, when you go to the store, apples, they can be red, they can be yellow, and they can also be green. This causes a little bit of a problem. Apples can be red, they can be also yellow, they can also be green. Okay, now this is actually a very, very bad thing. Usually pears are usually going to be yellow and strawberries are usually going to be red. So we'll go up here with, with them. Okay, now this right here, these apples, that's what causes our problem. And again, for a function, for every input, there is a unique output. So whenever I put apples in, I should only, for it to be a function, it only should be one result. But in this case, apples, the relation of the fruit to their color, apples can be red, or they can be yellow, or they can be green. Apples can be all sorts of different colors. I mean, you can make the argument for pears also. Pears can be yellow, then maybe a little bit green, depending, uh, we'll put that in there, depending on the um, uh, depending on where their their ripeness is, uh, strawberries on the other hand, um, I guess when they're maturing, they're white and a little bit green, and then once they fully mature into a full fruit, um, then they are uh, then they turn red. But anyway, uh, you get the idea that apples they can be a bunch of different colors. Apples can be red, apples can be yellow, apples can be green. There's no set result. There's no set answer on what colors the apple is going to be. Okay, so this is an example of something that is not a function, not a function. Okay, not a function. Okay, now I know these are a couple of examples that don't really deal with numbers, but again, you can kind of see the similarity with numbers, especially with the example that we did over here uh, with the stuff that you see at the at the grocery store and then the numbers of the prices on a certain date. Okay, so you can kind of see the re the uh, the connection with numbers there. Okay, that is determining whether a f uh, relation is a function. A couple of real life examples of whether uh, things in real life relations relations in real life or actual functions. Um, and again, as a reminder, a function, you just got to remember, uh, for every input, there is a unique output. 
Uh, I also like to say it as uh, functions, uh, whenever you plug something in, you only get one answer. Uh, whenever you, again, whenever you buy the chips on this certain date, you, they are only going to be $4.50. Sense. That is a function. On, uh, on the other hand, apples, they can be red, they can be yellow, they can be green. There's lots of different colors for your apples. That makes it not a function. Okay, so those are kind of the differences between the two. All right, that is determining whether a relation is a function. I hope this video was helpful to you.